طيب let's continue with lecture 39 we said we're gonna start with adiabatic reactor for deriving equation for t how realistic is the assumption of adiabatic operation of reactors well we just said it's very realistic it's often found in industry right reactions in industry are frequently carried out adiabatically with heating or cooling provided either upstream or downstream meaning the heat exchange will either be done before the feed goes into the reactor or after the feed, uh, the product leaves the reactor actually sometimes the hot product stream is used to cool to heat up the fresh reactant stream therefore you will catch two birds with one stone because you are heating the reactant stream at the same time you are cooling down the product stream consequently analyzing and sizing adiabatic reactors is an important task طيب let's talk about adiabatic energy balance Develop a method to determine the conversion at the exit of an adiabatic plug flow reactor using a thermocouple. So we have a plug flow reactor here. Tamam. This is the feed in. This is the feed out. And we want to know the conversion at the exit of the adiabatic plug flow reactor. However, by using a thermocouple, usually we use GCMS, gas chromatography, HPLC, uh, whatever, you know, different methods, different analytical methods that you have learned in analytical chemistry. Uh, we use these uh, equipments by, you know, we first take a sample and then inject, inject that sample into that equipment and then we analyze it and get for example the concentration and so on and we compare it to the concentration in the feed or the or the molar flow rate or anything so anyway we use an analytical chemistry equipment uh, and this way by the help of the lab we know how much conversion we we have achieved however now the weird thing is that this guy wants us to calculate or know or measure the conversion by using a thermocouple a thermocouple we all know that thermocouple measures temperature not conversion so how can i how can i relate how can i relate conversion to temperature so how can i plug in temperature and get conversion well we can do that through the adiabatic energy balance correct so we use the energy balance and we simplify it for adiabatic case this is zero this is zero in the plug flow reactor we don't have shaft work and then as you can see here we have t here and sorry not t we have x here come on so we solve for x we solve for x so let's solve for x in terms of t now you can see that we have t here and t here so we plug in t that you have measured using the thermocouple into this equation and we get the x tamam so this equation applies actually to ccr plug flow reactor packed bed reactor also to a batch reactor and through this we were able to calculate the conversion by reading the temperature or we can monitor actually the performance of the reactor how much conversion is giving me through monitoring the temperature for instance this is an example you have a plus 3b gives you 2c the standard test reaction at 25 degrees c is given the feed is introduced in stoichiometric ratio the feed is introduced the temperature of the feed is 500 degrees c the cps all are given and we use that same equation that we have just developed and we plot it somehow we plot it so for every for a given t for example if we have t let's say 
1000 so we can read that oh the conversion is around 45 percent right and so on if the temperature at the exit of the reactor dropped down to 500 that tells you that we don't have any conversion correct the feed is at 500 degrees c the temperature at the exit of the reactor is 500 degrees c that means we don't have any conversion okay so anyway the higher the temperature the higher the temperature this reflects the higher the conversion because the reaction is exothermic reaction and run adiabatically what else do we notice okay so here we wrote xeb instead of x only so this is xeb means that's conversion calculated through the energy balance and we can see that we have almost linear relationship right especially in a small temperature range so if you take a temperature range for example 500 to let's say 800 or maybe from uh, let's say 1000 to 1500 so the relationship is almost linear right the relationship is almost linear how come the relationship between x and t is linear while well, this equation is not linear right it's not linear you have t in the numerator and the t here in the denominator well that is because this term this term is small compared to this term right so if this term was co small compared to this term so, so as if you have on the a linear dependency only on the so this is as if this can be neglected or so on okay time out insight into the energy balance equation what is the relationship between the following energy balance equation and the one in thermo one and thermo two textbooks Smith and Venice so this is the energy balance that we have derived in this course and uh, in Smith and Venice it was simply delta H equals Q very simple so what's the relationship there let's see remember Shabab in Smith and Venice we had this figure where we had the reactants introduced one bar at 600 kelvin and then the product one bar and 1300 kelvin for instance and then we say huh let me calculate the q let me calculate the q and we know that q equals delta h and we know that delta h is a state function doesn't matter how in reality you have accomplished this delta h uh, i only care about the initial state and the final state and from these states i can calculate delta h through an imaginary path so the imaginary path was that you cool the reactant feed you cool the feed to 298 you carry out the reaction at 298 then heat the product to the exit condition and therefore delta h can be written as uh, delta H for the feed or the reactant stream plus delta H reaction plus delta H for the product stream okay so again what's the relationship between this equation and the one of oh, this equation which we have in Smith and Venice and this one well carefully by carefully looking at this equation you can see that in this equation the reaction is carried out at the exit temperature the reaction is carried out at the exit temperature so the reaction is carried out here come on and before that we are heating the feed from the feed condition to the exit temperature so first we go vertically up we take all the feed all the feed see theta i all the feed from the feed condition to the exit condition and then run the reaction so we, run, we take it from the feed to the exit condition and then we run the reaction at the exit temperature so this is the difference between these two equations but they are both fundamentally the same They're both the energy balance which is balancing a conserved quantity. Type. 
So let's go back to the adiabatic uh, energy balance and let's talk about adiabatic tubular reactor. We can rearrange the above equation to solve for t as a function of x. So as you can see, we have t here and t here. So we can solve for t. So when we solve for t in a case where we have an adiabatic reactor and the shaft work is negligible, we can get this equation t as a function of x. This equation will be coupled with the differential mole balance for a plug flow reactor. Remember for a plug flow reactor we had dx by dv equal minus ra over fa0 where minus ra is function of x and t. So that means in order to solve this problem we need also another equation for t as a function of x for example okay, well, therefore if i have that equation if i have that equation t as a function of x i can really substitute it for it here and then i have on the right hand side only x and now we can solve the problem solve the differential equation so we can do this so this equation can be coupled with the differential mole balance for a plug flow reactor to obtain t x and concentration profiles along the length of the reactor okay so let's see let's try to solve uh, to solve the for the volume of the reactor using the integration of fa naught over minus ra times dx correct remember this is the design equation so let's solve it numerically if you want to solve it numerically you have to find f a naught over minus r a as a function of x correct so let's do this let's vary x let's vary x and when i vary x i try to calculate minus r a but minus r a is function of two things right concentration and temperature right and the concentration can be found through the knowledge of conversion so we have conversion here we need to calculate temperature first so let's calculate temperature how from the energy balance this equation so we calculate the temperature and then from the temperature you can calculate the k constant reaction rate constant and therefore halas, we can calculate the rate of reaction because rate of reaction is function of x and temperature we have both and then we find if a naught over minus r a and then you plot it or you yeah you can plot it versus x or yeah you can uh, have some answer uh, some you know some calculation around doing this or well, basically the calculation is concerning finding the volume okay so now you have some numerical data and now you can calculate the volume for example by using um, smith uh, samsung uh, one third rule or, or, or so on type it should be noted that analytical integration is not possible so i cannot really integrate analytically here because F a over minus R a is function of both x and t as we mentioned i.e. you can't pull k out of the integral you cannot pull k out of the integral remember there is a k here then you can pull it outside the integral okay so you can't pull k out of the integral then use the approximate uh, the appendix for integration you cannot do this it cannot be solved except by numerical method okay i want you here to test yourself at home so you learn something new the reaction co plus half o2 gives you co2 was carried out isobarically and isothermally in a piston cylinder reactor at 25 degrees c with one mole of co and half mole of 
O2, the reaction proceeded to completion. So all of the reactants completely reacted to product. The amount of heat released from the reaction that was transferred to the coolant was estimated experimentally to be 282.99 kilojoules. Calculate the heat of reaction, standard delta H reaction at 25 degrees C using the given tables in the following page by using the definition standard delta H reaction at TR equals the mathematical definition of course the summation of new I H I standard at TR reference so basically saying you calculate the test reaction from the mathematical definition of, of, of the delta H reaction or by using the delta H formation for the involved species okay and the question now is compare the calculated values to the experimental value do both methods uh, do both methods give the correct answer do both methods give the final correct final answer okay so does this method give you something similar to this and this method as well give you something a number similar to this if not then explain why well just look at the table what's the table is given here the enthalpies are given at different temperature so you may you this is good for method number one for different species this is for co2 co2 and co and the other table what you are given here is the delta h formation delta h formation for the involved species okay do your calculations and let me know in class thank you very much and have a great great day bye for now